It's a force that helps propel society forward. It's a force that helps the underprivileged find upward mobility. It's a force that transforms the dreams of one generation into the reality of the next. None of us dispute the importance of education, but collectively, we often overlook something so fundamental to learning, the drive to learn. Just by a quick show of hands, who here is in the field they're in today because they really loved a mentor or teacher who helped guide them to their field? Now raise your hands if you've had an instructor you despise so much you can't stand their area of study at all. The results probably don't surprise anyone here tonight. Teachers we like inspire us, but teachers we dislike repel us. That's just what you'd expect, so let's go one level deeper. For those of you that followed, the foot, followed in the footsteps of that teacher or mentor you loved, let me ask you this. Why did you admire this person so much? Did they hand you easy grades and have you off on your way? Did they entertain your stories about how gross the cafeteria food was? Did they humor you as you shouted, that's what she said, at every possible opportunity? I bet that in many of your cases, your reason for admiring this person has nothing to do with what they taught you at all. And it has everything to do with getting you to value learning. You see, if all this admirable mentors of yours gave you was knowledge, they'd be replaceable. Siri and Alexa aren't perfect, but even they can spew out information. But these mentors of ours did something no cold, calculating machine could ever do. They recognized the interest that we had, and they began to compound it. In my case, that beloved mentor didn't even know my name. I'd be amazed if she could recognize me today. I was just one face in a crowded sea of 200 when she introduced herself. Barbara Erickson, Director of Computing Outreach at Georgia Tech. That room was full of kids like me, high schoolers taking AP Computer Science, invited by Barbara to Georgia Tech just weeks before the AP exam, unaware of what was in store for us that day. To Barbara, we were a special group. We had entered the world of computer science before we even really knew what it was about. Barbara brought us there that day to show us what life as a computer scientist could be like. So naturally, she showed off what Georgia Tech's computer scientists had been working on. She brought forth five projects created entirely by undergrads that combined programming and cinematography to create visual effects that put even the best Adobe Premiere tools to shame we sat in awe as vivid imagery illuminated the room, as spectacular transitions blended one scene to another, seamlessly, as one video after another captured the power of programming in ways words simply couldn't. Barbara knew what she was doing. She knew that by enrolling in AP Computer Science, this cohort of students already had some interest in the field. All she needed to do was give a little push before the effects began to compound. Without even knowing my name, Barbara forever changed the course of my life. This single outreach initiative tipped the scales for me. The only reason I was in computer science at the time was because my high school didn't have any other AP classes for sophomores to take. I, was, I definitely wasn't thinking there would be a future in this for me. But it's been seven years since then, and I've called the Georgia Tech College of Computing home for the past five. So that's great for me and all, but why should you care? Chances are you're probably not the director of some college outreach program. But that's exactly why I want to talk to everyone here tonight. You can have just as much impact on the community around you as someone in Barbara's position. You don't have to be involved in outreach in some professional capacity. You just need to do one simple thing. Find students that show some interest and start helping them compound it. During my five years here, I was never trying to be some ambassador for the College of Computing. I didn't serve on the board of any college of computing organization or even join outreach initiatives. But I loved what I was learning, and I was always trying to prove that my major was cooler than anyone else's. What started off as me giving some highly opinionated advice, which classes to take, which clubs to join, which major to switch to, ended up in me mentoring over 10 students. I didn't even mean to mentor anyone. I just saw they were interested, and I ran with it. I never could have predicted what these mentees could go on to do. Not only would they go on to mentor students individually the same way I did, but they would take it one step further. They would be the leaders in their communities, and they would advance the reach of programs like Barbara's. 
Two of those mentees in particular have had a huge impact on the Georgia Tech community. Maybe you know them. Their names are Mariana Matias and Baria Manahil. That's right. Mariana is a third year computer science student who just finished a term working for Girls Who Code. As a teaching assistant, Mariana was introducing a cohort of 20 high school girls to web development, data science, and robotics. Not only did these girls get to explore their interests this summer, they had them compounded. Four of her students have now gone on to run Girls Who Go chapters at their own high schools. Bari, on the other hand, is part of the operations team for HackGT, an organization dedicated to enabling students from all over the country, country to come together for an intense 36-hour marathon of hacking together the best app, video game, medical device, or electronics project they can possibly turn out. These so-called hackathons are the spark that ignites the hearts of so many newcomers in the world of STEM. This past month was the second HackGT Bari helped run, this time with over 4,000 applicants and 1,000 attendees. You would never guess that Bari actually struggled for a year and a half in college to figure out what she wanted to do with her life. I remember when I first met her, how she was so set on engineering. She realized she didn't have the passion for it. She actually came out of tests thinking this. <laughs> and she actually had that as the background on her phone that year. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> but then she visited Robotics Club with me. There we sat for two hours trying to make a robot not crash into a wall. By the way, this wasn't some fancy artificial intelligence we were working on. All the robot needed to do was see the wall and just not plow into it. Finally, after the two hours, our hard work paid off. You could see the glow on Baria's face. She was cheesing so hard, knowing that she got it working. Just a few weeks later, she took the leap and switched to computer science. So, one ambitious outreach director managed to instill drive in me. That manifested in mentorship on my part. And now we've got 10 college students, 1,000 hackathon attendees, and 20 high schoolers endowed by the same passion and drive as their predecessors. Each individual in this chain is living, breathing proof of the power of compounding interest. In math class, you probably learned about compounding interest with a formula that looks something like this. Here, F is the funding that you start off with. R is the rate that those funds grow at. And A is the amount that you end up with. Even if you're not a mathy person, there's just one key thing to understand about this formula. The higher that rate is, the more your money grows. No matter what you start off with, you're going to see growth, and it'll become enormous over time. For instilling drive and passion, we see a similar effect, except now we have others' efforts as what we start off with. The passion that you instill in others is what determines growth. And the result of all this is the impact it has on the world. The more passion you instill in others, the more impact you have on the world. These effects cascade over time, meaning that your contributions matter, no matter what anyone else is already doing. So how can you start instilling drive? Simple. Put yourself out there. Your thoughts, opinions, and experiences matter. Online or offline, find a way to channel the insight that only you have. Someone out there is looking for exactly what you have to say, whether it's on exploring space, combating climate change, or ending homelessness. And the best part is, you don't have to be an expert on those challenges to inspire someone else to tackle them. Your mentees will have their own interests, and you'll be tasked with compounding them. That means empowering them to find the solutions to these problems and connecting them with the people and resources that'll help them get there. So, if we want to propel society forward, we first need some motion. And we know that an idea in motion tends to stay in motion. So I ask each of you today to do your part in keeping this idea in motion. No matter what your field is, and how your passion and drive onto others, and watch the effects compound, knowing that you've been a part in truly educating this world. Thank you.